Hello, and welcome to Animal Chiropractic Clinic Chatter, a podcast where Dr. O, from all creatures, every spine, interviews doctors and animal owners that utilize animal chiropractic to get their unique perspectives. Yes, it's really a thing. Dr. O utilizes his 30 years of experience as both an animal chiropractor and veterinarian, and to dig deep into the discussion of complex issues affecting the lives of your animal friends and companions. Join us for this educational episode. Thanks for joining us for this portion of the episode as Dr. O begins to answer the question, What is animal chiropractic? He will look at how the chiropractic adjustment is a valuable and viable treatment for what ails your animals. Hello, everybody. What is animal chiropractic? Animal chiropractic is allowing your body's innate ability to heal itself. When should you start chiropractic? At birth. How often should you get adjusted? As often as you're subluxated. We had some puppies in last weekend. Mama didn't fit, wasn't milking very well. They, the owner didn't think. Um, they were gonna be here for a while because uh, they brought a bunch of dogs. So first thing we did was adjust the mother and we adjusted one of the babies that wasn't doing, was unable to latch. Um, a baby started immediately to latch and the mother um, within 30 to 40 minutes, she had relaxed and the owner said, oh my gosh, I think she has more milk now than she did before. Uh, rechecked mama, she was good. Rechecked the baby, she needed an adjustment. <clears throat> so adjusted her again. That was about 15 minutes. Um, the baby rechecked her again the next time at about 15 minutes, she was okay. Uh, about 45 minutes she needed an adjustment and then um, she was pretty good so you know how often as soon as you get subluxated we know that the presence of a vertebral subluxation puts pressure on the nerves once that nerve has pressure on it we start to get nerve degeneration and decreased transmission within 40 seconds within four minutes we'll have a 60 percent reduction of um, nervous transmission that's, that's proven. That's like your leg going to sleep. So as soon as we remove that vertebral subluxation, the nerve flow can start to generate. We know that if we immob immobilize a joint, which is what a vertebral subluxation does, that joint's not moving properly. If we immobilize that joint, we'll start to get some microscopic changes in that joint within seven days that are still there within six months. So we're going to get some microscopic changes that stay for a long time if the subluxation is there longer than seven seven days so how long should you get adjusted ideally as soon as the vertebral subluxation occurs maybe once a week at least once a month so you know we want to be subluxation free to, to achieve optimal wellness and health that's our goal because the body heals one way and only one way, above, down, inside out. Thank you. Have a great day. Make sure to visit our website, allcreatureseveryspine.com, where you can subscribe to the show and learn more about getting your animals adjusted. If you are in the Meridian, Texas area, drop in on a Tuesday afternoon to get your animals adjusted. If that isn't possible, schedule a consultation on your animal's health with Dr. O. You can also purchase a copy of Dr. O's book. Yes, it's really a thing. Helping others experience an abundant life with the gift, art, and blessing that is animal chiropractic it's our sole mission at All Creatures Every Spine. It's what we do. It's what we love. It truly is what keeps us motivated to help people just like you. 
I truly love the art of chiropractic. It drives me to provide the highest level of chiropractic possible. And as fellow chiropractic business owners, it's that love that drives us to become better. However, the reality is that sometimes running a successful business can be challenging. Sometimes there can be obstacles to overcome. We all know the old saying, if it were easy, everyone would do it. Well, one thing that is really easy is marketing our clinic with a professional animal chiropractic website by the Cairo website pro, Tony Seymour. He's a professional web designer and his team at Cairo Website Pro take good care of us. They simply make marketing our practice 100% hassle free. If you're looking for the number one hands free way to market your practice, give the Cairo Website Pro a call at 423-779-4630 or simply visit www.cairowebsitepro.com and make sure you ask them about the special ACES discount and let them know Dr. Amy and Dr. O sent you. You'll be glad. What is going on everyone? My name is Stan Smith. I'm the CEO of X-Dog and the inventor of the X-Dog Weight and Fitness Vest. What is the X-Dog Weight and Fitness Vest? In a nutshell, it is the world's greatest harness for dogs. It doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're looking to build muscle, combat obesity, address anxiety issues, high energy, you want to suppress that energy level. If you just want to take the average walk and turn it into a health improving workout, we made it so convenient to exercise your dog that you literally only need about 30 seconds a day. It doesn't matter if you're doing basic obedience training or competing at high level dog sports or in protection sports. The X-Dog Weight and Fitness Vest can enhance it and take any type of daily lifestyle to the next level. If you want to be part of our mission of eliminating canine obesity or just being a part of our team, make sure you go to teamxdog.com. As always, man, I want to thank you for your time and your support and Team X Dog Strong. Hello everyone and welcome to barfworld.com. If you're seeing this video, it typically means you're interested in trying our 90 day challenge. If your pet is suffering from allergies, kidney issues, obesity, diabetes, or even cancer, our food can help with that. So if you're ready to see your pet's health dramatically improve in just 90 days, call us and schedule your consultation today. Hope to talk to you guys soon. Join us as Dr. O interviews a certified chiropractor, veterinarian, or an animal owner. These enthusiastic people explain how they utilize animal chiropractic to alter the lives of the animals in their communities. Welcome everybody to another episode of Animal Chiropractic Clinic Chatter. Uh, we'd like to thank you all for listening. Um, there's 250 chiropractic podcasts in the U.S. that you could choose from, and you chose us, and that puts us in the top 15. Thank you so much. We're going for 10, so tell your friends. Uh, today, we have a little bit kind of a different guest. Normally, we talk to animal chiropractors, or we talk to animal owners. Today, well, tell us a little bit about yourself, Aaron. Well, yeah. Well, first of all, thanks so much for the opportunity to be a part of your program here and all of you listening. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm, I'm an unusual suspect for sure. Um, yeah. So my name is Baron Hoig. I am not a chiropractor, but I've, I've worked in the chiropractic profession for 26 years. I've served a lot of different roles. I've owned clinics. I've run state associations. I've run national associations. Um, but I really just call myself the profession's biggest groupie that it's ever had. Um, because I just, uh, you know, I cannot stop putting myself in the center of what's going on chiropractically. And, uh, but yeah, my daughter is a chiropractor. You know her very well, Dr. O, as she's a student yes. in your program. And we'll be heading out to see you here again too, uh, not too long for their, her fourth uh, lab with you guys. Um, but yeah, she has loved the idea of adjusting animals uh, her whole life. Um, and so as I started learning 
the ins and outs of this animal chiropractic side of things, I started really realizing that there's kind of a, a disconnect in the way that this operates across the country. Not every state looks at it the same way. Not every a licensing board looks at it the same way. And it creates a very unstable environment um, for chiropractic. And so that's why we kind of dug in with our organization. And it's kind of what led me to start talking with you. Yeah, and we appreciate it. Um, so first off, you know, one of some of our talks, uh, what led you to chiropractic in the first place? Because that's always exciting. Yeah, so it was a God thing. You know, I uh, at the time I was young, I was uh, 20 years old. Um, I had just gotten fired from a job for being a mouthy, cocky little SOB and uh, needed to learn a little bit about life, I think, and uh, didn't know what I was going to do. And, and really, I had a daughter, uh, my daughter, I had her when I was 19 years old. So, you know, very young, trying to figure life out, knew I needed to provide and that I, you know, I'd applied at Walmart, I'd applied at McDonald's and I didn't care. I just needed income and insurance. And I saw an ad in the paper for uh, said office manager at a local doctor's office. Well, I, I had had some clinical training in my undergrad education. And, um, you know, I thought, man, this, these hours work great for me to finish my education and, uh, and still be able to provide some, you know, revenue to my family. And it just happened to be a chiropractor's office. I didn't know anything about chiropractic. I'd never been to a chiropractor. No one I knew had ever been to a chiropractor. Honestly, I didn't even know there was a profession in, in all seriousness. And the guy uh, hired me because I have a big mouth and I knew everybody in my town and he was hoping I could drive in some, some new patients. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I just, long story short, I just saw miracles every single day and I could not explain them. These are, we're not too far from Ohio State University here in Ohio. And, you know, we would get these patients that were at the the the, uh, the university hospital system and we're told this is just how life is going to be. After a couple of visits, they were coming in, hugging our doctor, hugging me, thanking us for giving them their life back. And I could not put my finger on it. I just could not understand what was going on. And I'm, I'm the kind of person, I'm not overly intelligent, but I hate being the, the dumbest person in a conversation. So I just do, you know, I roll up my sleeves and I have to understand it. And the more independent research I did to understand what exactly was happening with the chiropractic adjustment, the more irritated I got that I didn't know this. And all of the things in my own life, all the things within my family's life, my new baby girl that I had, that I didn't realize the trauma that happened at birth and why I wasn't having her adjusted. And, you know, I just started becoming this massive mouthpiece for a profession that really didn't have a very good one. And we grew like crazy. I think the office I was at when I got there, we were seeing about 60, 70 a week. Within five months of me doing this education, you know, we were at 300 a week. And so wow. I got a, a name for myself as the non-Cairo Cairo, the guy that could articulate really what was going on through the adjustment and going out there and sharing it with the world. And so that's kind of where it got started. So it was all God. He just led me down the right pathway and I fell in love with the profession. And I'm 26 years later, I, I literally could hang with a neurologist on the impact of the adjustment. I know it that well. And I've just been trying to find avenues to help the world better understand and utilize chiropractic around the world. Cool. I mean, so I was even, I started chiropractic because I had a, a son with epilepsy and autism. Mm. And everybody said, you know, oh, you need to use this herb and you need to use this remedy. And, and because I was trained as a veterinarian, I had to know the mechanism of action of, you know, yeah. why is it working? How yeah. come? Why? And I'd buy these books and on homeopathy and you go to the chapter on seizures and it says, that's a serious condition, consultant, uh, a, a professional in your area. And I'm like, there are no professionals in my area. <laughs> so, yeah. um, so I ended up going to school. I have a degree in veterinary homeopathy. I have a doctorate in veterinary homeopathy. Um, you know, I went to chiropractic uh, seminars, a couple animal chiropractic seminars, and ended up, you know, getting certified in animal chiropractic. But I still didn't understand it because – just like chiropractic schools, there's some animal chiropractic schools, they teach a tool. Yeah. But they don't teach why, and they don't teach the power that right. a chiropractor has in their hands. And the first thing that I really realized, and it took me about four or five years after it happened to realize how important it was, I was going through a divorce. I weighed 300 pounds. I woke up, had a shooting pain down my left arm. What's your diagnosis? I'm having a heart attack. That was me. Yeah. Got the kids to school because I'm a good dad, right? 
three teenage kids at home, get the kids to school, don't want to see them, don't want them to meet, you know, have to see me suffer. And uh, I'm going to drive to see my cardiologist because he's a client and brings his dog in without an appointment all the time. So I was just going to return the favor. And I'm driving by my chiropractor on the way to his office. And I thought, man, my back hurts. So I go in, pull in to get an adjustment. He says, he comes out, he says, oh, you're lucky. I just had a cancellation. Get in here and lay down. Anything new? Nah, same old, same old. So I lay down and he adjusts me. He says, roll over. You got a first rib out. He adjusted it. I said, all right, get up. I got up and I started looking at my arm. He says, are you all right? I said, well, yeah, I'm all right. I said, I had the shooting pain down my left arm. It's gone. <laughs> he got white. Yeah, yeah. He's like, that I mean, would be good to know. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, white. Drain, yeah, yeah. but I didn't know. Yeah, yeah, I didn't yeah. know what I didn't know at that time. This is like you know, 20 years ago. And uh, he goes, sit down. Took my blood pressure. I don't know. Anyway, about 20 minutes later, he finally let me leave. So since then, I've done some research, and I firmly believe that if I'd have walked in the office and said, "Hey, I think I'm having a heart attack," I wouldn't be here today. Yeah, my chances of dying from a stress test, one in a thousand. My chances of dying from an angiocath, one in 2,500. My chances of dying from a chiropractic adjustment, between one in one million and one in four million. That's right. The only reason I'm here is I was too stupid or lacked the education to know that I should have told my chiropractor that I thought I was having a heart attack so he could have made a decision whether to adjust me or not. Right. No, I needed him to adjust me. Like you said, it was a God thing. Yeah. He needed to adjust me. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And when you understand why, right, when you get down to the neurology of what the adjustment does and what it does with the sensory input to the brain and how it does with, you know, motor or interpretation right. of the data and then motor output. When, when you know, Dr. Heidi Havik is a, a – DC PhD out of New Zealand and she's amazing and she's proven that the adjustment stimulates the prefrontal cortex on a higher level than any other natural method available to the human body which means like and that's essentially what drugs do right drugs use chemistry to fool the brain into certain things causing the brain to then produce certain patterns put out secrete certain um, neurotoxins so on and so forth right but when you can do that naturally and the body's doing it independently because it's awake and it now sees what's going on in the body that is the most appropriate form of neuroplasticity and health that your body could go through. And that's what the adjustment does. And when you, yep. when you get adjusted because you want your brain and your body to have a better connection and you want your brain to do a, a proper assessment and do the self-healing and self-regulating that it was designed to do from its own innate ability, just like it does healing a cut, just like it does shivering when it's cold or sweating when it's hot. These are things that are involuntary. They're innate actions that the body just knows to do for self-preservation. When you adjust, a, when you get adjusted, you feel that information, that rush up to the brain and the brain is awake and saying, okay, let's do an inventory. What's going on? And, it, and that's the beauty of what happens in animals. And Maddie has shared this with me coming from your guys' classes as well. When you look at the physical behavior of an animal that tells you if the adjustment actually did what it was supposed to do, you're looking for shivers, you're looking for, you know, a little bit of movement or a certain pathway to say, okay, yeah, this did what it did because it shocked the brain, the brain then sent the information to that area and you're watching it change in the behavior pattern of the animal. That is the most fabulous thing to me on this planet and why I've been a groupie for 26 years. Yeah, the one thing that, reading Heidi's book, when I first read it, it was like, oh, that's cool. Um, that the adjustment affects all the white noise in your brain. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that's cool. White noise. What's white noise? Oh, it's just that stuff that goes on. Okay. Yeah. It's stuff that goes on in the background. But what goes on in the background? Well, when's the last time you told your heart to beat? Right. When's the last time you said breathe? When's the last time you told that cell right there to eat, yeah. drink, and be happy? That's right. <laughs> That's the white noise. Yeah. 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 It's that, that, it's that 
It's that subconscious innate, right? And the, and here's what people need to understand that's more importantly, like D.D. Palmer and B.J. and Stevenson, all the guys back in the beginning, you know, they talked about the forms of stress, physical, emotional, chemical, thoughts, toxins, and traumas. And, and when you look at that, though, and you understand that the brain, you know, Pavlov proved to us that the brain operates in a cycle, in a system, patterns, yeah. Right. If I do something long enough, my brain just starts believing that's normal. That's where chronic pain comes from. Surprising the people that have chronic pain. It isn't that they still have a systemic issue. It's that the brain is now stuck in this pattern of believing that this is now a normal state of being. So it creates that chronicity in the pain because pain only really is possible of existing in the brain, not in the rest of your body. Right. And so what the adjust that, that white noise, right, that Heidi's talking about is it breaks up those patterns. It says, wait a minute. Is what we thought 15 days ago, is that still true today like it was then? And when it does that assessment, it's like, oh, crap, no, it's not. Okay, now we have to self-heal, self -heal, self-regulate to adapt to what we're learning today and break it out of that stuck pattern. You see that in horses specifically, right? Horses have those patterns as well, that it, which is why I'm so horrible that these animals, when they're with the wrong type of providers that don't understand how that innate works, that they just sentence these animals to death because they don't have the vocabulary to explain to them, no, 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 you know, it's not what you think it is, right? And that's why it's so important the work you guys are doing at ACEs and and, and the other animal chiropractors all over the world because we, we need to allow the body to do what it was designed to do. And it is a magnificent organism and so resilient and capable of restoring it. And I know, you know, Jay Kamarik, who which I know you know Jay very well, you know, his story of just the amount of horses that he saved that were getting ready to be slaughtered because they just figured they were lame and there was nothing more they could do with them. And now they've just had this amazing life because they, they their body has been able to really do its own restorative and regenerative work. So it's, yeah, it's an incredible thing. And yeah, it is. And it's so cool. We do a lot of dogs. I do a lot of competitive dogs that are going to retire, go on to, you know, be international champions and world-class athletes. And, and then a lot of just couch potato dogs. You right. know, I had a, I had a client call me the other day and on a podcast, and we were doing a podcast and we're about halfway through the podcast live recording. And she goes, Hey, Dr. O, I got a bone to pick with you. And I'm like, Oh, great. <laughs> I love these calls. This yeah. is a good time for this. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> and I said, all right, shoot. She said, yeah, my dogs don't die. <laughs> She said, oh, that's awesome. She said, before I started using you tw 20 years ago, my average lifespan of my dogs was 11 or 12 years old. And now they're 17, 18, 19 years old. And so instead of having three or four dogs, I got eight. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's pretty funny, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, yeah. but it was like the way she started it. I was like, Oh no, where's this yeah. going? You know, yeah, yeah, I have yeah, no yeah. idea. Um, but, but like your daughter, um, it took me 37 years when my son died finally after a seizure, but I firmly believe that there's 17 chiropractors. I'm alive because of a chiropractor. My son that got hit by a drunk driver is alive because 14 chiropractors, um, became family members. Mm -hmm. And adjusted my son in a family's only uh, unit, even though yeah. it wasn't probably kosher, <laughs> but they adjusted him. Uh, and But then my other son is dead because um, for 17, there's 17 chiropractors that lived in the communities that I lived in before I was 39 years old, before he was 13 years old, that never spoke about the power of the adjustment yeah. that never said that never gave me the option to choose animal chiropractic or chiropractic either one yeah and and i think that is more important in the fight that we're fighting yeah with these boards and with chiropractors to be able to do what they do and animal chiropractors to do what they do it's not about getting everybody adjusted. No. I mean, that would be great. Sure. But it's about giving everybody the option to make an educated decision. 100%.
100%. And, and when when there's artificial reasons and rules that limit that, because it, you know, it's one thing for the individual to not have the fortitude to stand up and speak the truth in their community. It's another thing to have an arsenal of people that want to do it, but then they're persecuted for doing it because that particular legislation or that particular state doesn't have an environment conducive for them to speak that truth. And, and that's really what got us into it, right? So part of my nonprofit um, part of the work we do is defending the rights of practicing chiropractors around the world. We have the Chiropractic Defense Council. Right. And uh, and I got pulled into this because there were chiropractors in California that had reached out. They'd heard about the work that we did with COVID and, and vaccine mandates and other regulatory overreach issues that we've faced around the United States as it relates to chiropractic. And they're like, listen, would this fit into your guys' purview? And I was like, I don't know. Tell me what's going on. And they 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 supplied me with cease and desist letters that they had been receiving from the vet board along with $5,000 fines um, for practicing veterinary medicine without a license. Now they're certified, um, you know, one of them went to your class and, and got ABC certified. Another one went to options for animals and got certified. And, and, and you know, they, they did their job, they got the education, they're practicing appropriately. And because that environment just doesn't understand where this fits within the hierarchy and, and the infrastructure for animal care, um, they're being persecuted for it. And mm -hmm. obviously anyone that's ever had a specialty and then been basically told, if you continue to do what you're doing, you're going to lose your ability to provide. It's a very, it's a very debilitating reality. And so that's when I started really digging in and looking all over the U S and there's actually only seven States right now that have language that allow properly educated people, which are people that go through your program, um, and get the ABC certification so that it's been tested. There's an accrediting body over top of it that they can actually practice without any kind of supervision or referral. Seven out of 50. That's a problem. And, and those are, let's tell uh, so, everybody. Yeah. So they're Ohio, Arkansas, Colorado, um, Oklahoma, Kentucky just got a version of it. Um, and Utah, Minnesota or in Minnesota, excuse me. I'm sorry. I did. I forgot Minnesota. Yeah. So, you know, those are the states that allow that. Anywhere else, you there is no language, which leaves it open to interpretation, which is scary. It's like the Wild West, which means you have people that go to a one-hour class saying that they know how to adjust animals and they're out there doing it freely, which is a problem. Or you have, you need a direct referral or direct supervision, which is even more insane that the animal owner has to pay both for the vet to sit there, not having a clue what they're observing or supervising for the record, and they have to pay for the chiropractor, right? So there, it's just an unnecessary expense and burden administratively to everybody involved. And so what we're trying to do, and you guys have been great to work with in this, and I, actually I'm going to do a shout out to pretty much all of the organizations currently that exist in this space have been so receptive for us to come in, ask a million and a half questions to understand what's going on. But our objective within the next two years is to have standard language across all 50 states, allowing animal chiropractors to be able to, to, to care for their animals freely if they've done the work to get the education. So a lot of work. We got to deal with vet boards and chiropractic boards and associations and regulatory yep. bodies. And so there's a lot of, of strings that we've got to get untangled and moving in the same area. But I'm confident we're going to be able to do it because it's what's in the best interest for really everybody involved. And I'm going to argue, you know, it tends to be a turf war with the vets. But if if people will sit back and realize this isn't a turf issue, that this is really about a concurrent uh, concurrency of care. Yep. And it's about relieving the stress points within the current framework. This is a this is a benefit for the vets. I mean, it really is to have that viable option to not have to deal with some of these more chronic issues where they don't know what they need to do. And knowing that there's there's colleagues that they can work with and communicate with to be able to provide a, a more alternative focused care and allow the animal owners to have that choice. You, you said that earlier. You didn't get that choice with your son. And we it is absolutely necessary that these animal owners have this choice and the freedom to decide what kind of care they want for their animals and then be able to, to do informed consent to have that done. And so that's the work that we're trying to do across the United States. And I applaud it. I mean, it's awesome. Um, because yeah, we gotta be educated. We gotta have that choice. And, and like, so during COVID, even in Texas, um, I was outside my chiropractor's office waiting outside, uh, patiently in front of a blank wall. <laughs> uh, and I decided to do a Facebook live and I started talking about how I was here, uh, to get my immune system boosted so that I was going to increase my T lymphocyte activity 
um, which should help me against viral infections and blah, 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 and all this. And the receptionist came running out and said, you can't say that. <laughs> right. And, and yeah. I was like, but it's proven. Yeah. There is scientifically valid double blind studies. And in fact, one of the studies was done by the New York School of Medicine that proved that key lymphocyte activity goes up by four times in yep. an adjusted person. Now, some interesting history on the New York School of Medicine. After the Flexner Report, which graded all medical colleges in 1910 based on Harvard, Yale, and pharmacology, the New York School of Medicine had a name change because prior to that report, it was called the New York School of Homeopathic Medicine. Ah, interesting. They flunked the Flexner Report. However, the Flexner Report was paid for by Rockefeller and Carnegie. Yeah. Um, if you flunked that report, it was possible to get a grant from the Rockefeller Foundation, of course, in order to allow you to increase your score by improving your laboratory facilities, <laughs> offering some pharmacology classes and yeah. stuff like that. And the Rockefeller Foundation would give you a grant to allow you to do that. Yeah. They were brilliant, dude. I mean, I'm telling you, as, as disgusting as it is today to know that allopathic medicine for the most part is bought and paid for, it is unbelievably brilliant what the Rockefellers did. I mean, they literally created their own pipeline. It, it's 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 really brilliant. <laughs> it just well, they did. did. So every osteopathic college flunked that report too. Yep. As did every chiropractic college. The chiropractic colleges, for the most part, have held steadfast. Yep. However, right before the Flexner report was acted on by Congress, which took them about 20 years to do that they're really on top of things you know they do things quickly <laughs> yes um yes. even back then they did it very quickly yeah, yeah. Uh, so the report came out in 1910 in 1937 congress acted on it and said hey we need standards of medicine you know blah 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 you need to pass all this stuff right before that the american osteopathy osteopathy association decided to add pharmacology yeah. to their curriculum so that every one of the osteopathic colleges earn a passing grade. Yeah, yeah. And get access to that research money that was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And now you can't tell the difference between an osteopath and an MD in today's no. environment. You wouldn't even no. know the difference. No. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, thank goodness there were some chiropractors that stood fast and didn't mind being called quacks. However, that report came out in 1937, or the Congress acted on it in 37. In 1938, BJ is quoted as saying, yes, we know that chiropractic works on quadrupeds. We've had a clinic at the PSC all yep. along, but we recently decided to discontinue that because some of our members didn't like being called horse doctors. Yeah. Which was right after. So all this stuff is happening at the same time. Yeah. Coincidence? No. 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 That they, there was a plan that's been or there still is. COVID yep. was part of that plan. I mean, there's there's been a plan that they've executed a million different ways. But here's the deal. You know, I at the end of the day, I trusted my Lord and Savior, and I know that the plan has already been predestined. I'm going to keep doing my work. We're going to do the work that we know is true. Yep. And uh, and we've survived 128 years. We're going to survive 128 more. Um, but I I think we're getting our stuff together. And I think it's it's our day. I think the pendulum is swinging. And I think allopathic medicine, you know, between opioids and COVID, it showed the economic impact that pharmaceutical, so far as pharmaceutical companies have in healthcare protocols. And I think the general public, at least for a season, is awake. And this is our time to keep pushing this through yep. And, yep. and to keep telling our truth. And so we're just going to keep doing that. Yep. That's all we can do. Keep telling our truth. Hopefully, you know, um, we open one or two minds a day and that's all we really need. That's I exactly can't, right. I can't tell you how many people we've sent to the chiropractor. They come in, 
Ask them if you've ever been to the chiropractor before or not. Oh, no, they're quacks. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't ever go to a chiropractor. But you brought your dog to one. Yeah. I yeah. There's no hope for my dog, you know. <laughs> You're my last chance. Isn't that so funny? Yeah. yeah, yeah and yeah. then six months later, the dog's doing great. And they're like, hey, doc, I got this hitch, you know. Yeah. I say, well, I got a list. Here's my list of chiropractors in the area that you could go see. Um, because they definitely, one of them can help you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so thank you so much for coming on today. Uh, wow. We appreciate wow. it. And uh, everybody out there listening, um, if, if you want to help the CDC, uh, Chiropractic Defense Council, um, support Animal Chiropractic, how can they get a hold of you? Yeah, best way is to go to our website. It's www.defendchiropractic.com dot org and then if you really are interested in the animal side right at the end of that do forward slash animal Cairo and that'll take you to a special landing page it'll tell you kind of what we're doing you can get signed up for a newsletter that keeps you up to date on what's happening um, specifically in the animal Cairo world and then an opportunity to support if you so choose to do so which we would love to support all right thank you all for tuning in remember the body heals one way and one way only above down inside out Keep those atlases adjusted. And until next time, we'll see you later. Uh, get a hold of us at yescairo.com. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. All right. If you are or know a veterinarian or chiropractor or a student of either of these professions, visit our website, Animal Chiropractic Education Source, to see how to become certified in animal chiropractic. Start improving the lives of the animals around you. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe to the ACES channels so that you never miss an exciting episode.